it is damaging me it has damaged me and i have no confidence I, when i look at myself in the mirror i feel very <sighs> ew are you willing to give three hours of your life to something that makes you feel bad so i don't have any ties with them in real life so i should not have any ties with them on social media and they should not have access to my life because of whatever relations that we had previously you need to always be conscious always there because those negative thoughts they they come out of nowhere they'll bamboozle you and trick you into like a, a downward spiral i don't like myself i have body dysmorphia keep them now family members welcome back to our channel my name is Jayo I am a fashion blogger fashion content creator and a designer and today we're going to be talking about insecurities body dysmorphia social media and how I got here <laughs> so basically a few days ago I had therapy I'm talking to my therapist and we're talking about the challenges that I have been going through and she just like flat out tells me that you don't like yourself and i was like i'm sorry wait a minute what are you talking about i have always been a very confident person or at least i thought i was but for the fact that she said that to me i took a step back and i started to think like am i really confident or is my confidence just like built on social media and built on superficial things and i came to the conclusion that oh, she was right she she got her degree and she know everything since you got your degree and you know every fucking thing and i was like you know you might be onto something so through having a deep conversation with myself i came to the realization that not only do i not like myself i only like the social media version of myself because when i am not all done up when I'm having like hormonal acne flare up when my hair is not done, my nails are not done, my lashes are not done. When I look at myself in the mirror, I feel very <sighs> ew. And that's not really a good feeling to have. And I thought about it and I was like, I don't feel that way about my family members. I don't feel that way about my friends. Like I'm the type of person that really believes that everybody is beautiful in their own way. So for me to not be able to extend that to myself something is seriously wrong like something is um, very 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 wrong that is what we're going to talk about today because through the like conversation i had with myself i realized that instagram had a huge part to play in the whole thing and even though i have been taking a break from instagram and social media in general i realized that i don't like myself when i am fully submerged in the world of social media and it's so unfortunate because i have a business i am a content creator so that means that social media is basically my world i spend so much of my time studying algorithms i spend so much of my time researching reach on different platforms and researching content strategy and all of that so that is like 80 percent of my life so for me to come to that realization i had to ask myself the really deep question of do i still want to do social media and the truth is i do still want to do social media creating content really gives me joy i feel like i'm getting back to myself i feel like i am getting back to i used to be and i'm becoming like a happier version of myself so i do i love creating content but the aspect of posting content on social media engaging on social media i am so unsure about it because i am pretty sure now that i have body dysmorphia <laughs> What is self-doubt and what is body dysmorphia? Self-doubt is when you do not believe in yourself. You believe the voices in your head that are telling you that you cannot do it. And sometimes when you find yourself in a room where you are qualified, you feel like you have no reason of being there and that your qualifications really don't matter because you're not good, you're the worst, is what self-doubt is in a nutshell. Body dysmorphia is believing your body or seeing your body to be a certain way that it's not obviously i'm not a psychologist i 
have no degree in psychology whatsoever. My occupation is fashion, but I have experienced these things firsthand. I know that I'm not the only one dealing with this. I have friends that also have social media and I also have, and those friends also have businesses. They deal with social media a lot. And most of the time we're talking for like months at a time about taking a break. And then we're talking like we cannot take a break due to X, Y, and Z. We cannot take a break due to business flourishing at this point or things moving a certain way. It has a negative effect because most times you log on to Instagram and all you see is people having perfect lives. Everything is picture perfect. You see the perfect body, the perfect face, filters 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 as you guys already know i struggle from hormonal acne so that means that i almost always either have acne or blemishes on my face from acne and it's been that way since i was 13 years old so when i entered into the world of instagram that was just like super crazy for me because i had access to all of these filters and those things were just eating at my confidence because when I put these filters on, I do these videos, I turn my phone off and I look in the mirror, I look nothing like that. And, I'm, and I used to think to myself, why don't I look anything like that? Maybe I need to start um, to get Botox. Maybe I need to consider plastic surgery. Maybe I, you know, there's so many thoughts that go through my head and make me feel like I am not enough because when I'm on Instagram, I'm seeing face 24, hip 40, bust 26, like, and I'm over here like, why does my body not look like that? What am I doing wrong? And since we're in the spirit of transparency, I'm just be completely transparent with you guys. I have never been a very, very heavy girl. I was overweight for a period of time. In high school, um, from middle school to high school, I was overweight. Around last year to the beginning of this year, I weighed 166 and that is the heaviest I've been in my life. And I, and I recognize that it's not heavy, but when I looked in the mirror, I was so disgusted with myself. And I felt like I weighed 200 pounds. I was like, I have to diet, I have to exercise because the weight have to go down. When I would go for appointments into the hospital, like my doctor, started to tell me like you're overweight but it wasn't such a big deal like she wasn't emphasizing on it like girl you're overweight she was just like mm, you need to drop a few pounds for your height it's not in correlation having the medical professional tell me that was just like the seal for everything then i became obsessed obsessed with my weight and i need to be skinny because obviously everybody thinks that i am overweight and i am disgusting i started to diet i'm talking this is like recent stuff because even up till now i'm still dealing with this i'm still trying to have like a healthy relationship with food and and eating etc when i tell you diet it wasn't no healthy diet and like i would have one meal in two days i'm talking 48 hours I'm eating 300 calories. <sighs> I'm going to the gym excessively. I'm going to the gym. Sometimes I would be in the gym for three hours, four hours, four days a week. And out of that four days a week, I've probably eaten like two days. Everybody this year is like, oh my God, Jael, you're losing weight. What are you doing to lose weight? Girl, I'm experiencing body dysmorphia and I'm losing all of this weight. I'm looking in the mirror and I still see this fat person. And like I said, I'm looking on Instagram and I'm seeing all these people, they look so incredible. And I'm thinking to myself, why don't I look like that? What I failed to realize is those people look like that because number one, they have money. Number two, they don't look like that. They have filters, they have apps that modify their bodies and I, I know that, but for whatever reason, it's not clicking in my brain. I'm getting the signals that this, you need to be like this. So that happened to me in January, February, March, April for four months. I would probably be sick for like a week and in the week I would have had one meal and not even like a meal, maybe like a cookie. My blood levels are just to the floor down in hell <laughs> looking in the mirror i'm just like what is going on why do i still feel this way i walk it over with my therapist and she's like this is body dysmorphia and i'm just like oh okay 
well how do you fix that it's just like this whole process of elimination and removing some things out of your life i had to take a break from social media and I had to take a step back and the break was just unintentional it was like a deeper issue that was going on if you watched my previous video you will see where I talked about me like being depressed that caused me to take a step back from everything so that was what was going on essentially and that's why I took a break from social media it had it was not intentional at all but when I took that break it gave me time to think like yes i do want in this and yes i've been pursuing this for a long time but how healthy and how beneficial is this to my mental health to my overall well-being it is damaging me it has damaged me and i have no confidence i am doubting myself i am doubting every single decision that i'm making in my life when i look in the mirror I, the person that's looking back at me i don't necessarily like her i don't like her if she is not offering some sort of value because for whatever reason i believe that you always have to be offering value and if you are at the point where you cannot offer any value you are not worthy of love you're not worthy of compassion you're not worthy of care and it should not be that way it is not a good life that is not real life and that is not normal i know that there's a lot of people that's going through this and that's why i i don't want to be silent about my struggles i don't want to hide about anything that i'm going through if my worst fear is people saying it back to me or using it to talk to me that's okay as long as i've touched somebody that is going through the same thing or i've helped somebody or i've made them to feel less alone that's all i really care about i am like tired of hiding in the shadows of all of these things that i've been going through so and we got this bestie we got this so here's how we're going to i actually created the strategy and obviously so far it's been working so i want to share with you so that you can implement them and then we could be on the same page the first strategy is to practice radical self-love wake up in the morning look at yourself in the mirror the thoughts they're there and they're probably going to be there for a while when you look at yourself in the mirror in your rawest form in your purest form like i'm talking without wig without anything like look at yourself in the mirror and the very first thought that comes to your mind if it is i look disgusting you need to counter that with i am good i am worthy i am enough and the way i look does not deter me if i should be loved or not and my looks do not determine if I deserve love or if I don't deserve love what really matters is my heart and soul so number two is to always motivate yourself to tackle the self-doubt you have to always motivate yourself so if you're feeling like I can't do this or I'm not enough I'm not da -da 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 -da, start with your strengths I can do this because I am this 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 when you are feeling down when you're feeling negative always counter that with how you can motivate yourself. Get in this mentality of being your number one fan. Start with that. A thing where you need to constantly be conscious. You need to always be conscious, always there, because those negative thoughts, they, they come out of nowhere. They come out of nowhere and they'll bamboozle you and trick you into like a, a, a downward spiral. You gotta be, you gotta be on your feet always on your feet start to feel a negative feeling counter that with a motivation and counter that with a positive message to yourself immediately so that your brain is understanding that we're not going to let this stay there's no room for this negativity here no, 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 no. number three is to create healthy social media boundaries if you inventory of the situation you realize that social media is the problem like i did you need to create healthy social media boundaries initially i had this thing where i set a limit for social media for three hours a day but i started to realize that three hours is a lot of time do i want to give three hours of my life to social media because now i'm thinking of time as in currency because time is a currency all of these things that are demanding your time are basically demanding your life so are you willing to give three hours of your life to something that makes you feel bad but you need to ask yourself and as for me personally i don't have that in me anymore so the three hours that i would have spent on social media i spend that time reading sometimes i spend that time reading my bible maybe a book watching something educational or just watching something that makes me feel happy that makes me feel good engage and making me to be more present and be more 
present with myself, my family, my friends, my business, and all of that. If you are not completely at the point where you want to give up social media, you need to also go on your social media and see what you can get rid of. Maybe you can't get rid of social media completely, totally, but you can get rid of people that make you feel a certain way. Maybe it's your friends from your hometown. Maybe it's even your family or even people that you follow on social media that make you feel a certain way. Consider restricting them, blocking them, or just completely unfollowing them, period. Because there's no need for you to pay your phone bill, have your phone, go on your phone, on the social media that you're paying for, on the plan that you're paying for to feel bad. I don't think it makes sense. So if you realize that somebody or something or somewhere or whatever is making you feel bad unfollow block delete i promise you you'll feel a lot better when i went on facebook and i blocked and deleted so many people i felt so good i really 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 felt so good like i'm not even trying to be dramatic but that night i slept well because i didn't feel scared to go on my own social media I didn't feel scared that somebody that I don't like is going to post something and I would have to see it and it would make me feel bad. If I'm avoiding that person in real life, why do I have them on social media? If I won't talk to that person, if I saw them in real life, why am I constantly engaging with them online if it's not going to make me feel good? Those are the thoughts that I had and that is the very conversation that I had with myself. How is this benefiting you? How is this serving you? And how is this affecting your mental health? And I realized that it was negatively affecting my mental health. So I had to remove that. I had to let that go and I had to let those people go. So I don't have any ties with them in real life. So I should not have any ties with them on social media and they should not have access to my life because of whatever relations that we had previously. Period. 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 Number four is creating a pattern that is effective. I realized that having a routine is the best possible thing for me and I have created a routine. A routine that is, I include all of these steps in a routine that helps me physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Obviously, I'm not where I want to be physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, but I realized that having a routine is going to build me up to get to that point. So create a healthy routine for yourself. If, like I said, your problem is body dysmorphia, I've realized that I need to have a proper meal schedule. I need to this thing where I plan my meals way ahead of time, where I'm cooking for myself, where I'm going to the gym, but not going to the gym because I want to change anything about my body, but just going to the gym because I want to be healthy. So every time I go to the gym, I have to remind myself, I'm not here because I want my body to be a certain way. I'm here because I want to be healthier and because I want to have a healthy lifestyle. Whew, why is that gonna make me cry? Because I want a healthy lifestyle and because I want to be the best version of myself, not for Instagram, not for any social media platform, but just so that I can be proud of myself. No matter how I look, I'm still worthy of love. No matter how I look, I, I'm still worthy of care I'm still worthy of compassion and I am enough the way I am girl <laughs> yeah me about to cry on social media I'm about to cry on YouTube ooh, ooh. the last step is to seek professional help and I wouldn't have been able to do any of this if I didn't take the first step in talking to somebody. I talked to my therapist who in turn broke everything down for me and that led me to having the conversation with myself which led to all of this. I feel like this should be step one but it's step five but this is the most important step. Talk to somebody and I recognize that some people may not have access to therapy because of whatever reason but if you have friends and family that you trust talk to them sometimes you feel like it's your life you know everything but there are people outside of you that see things much more differently and probably see things better right now in this situation than you do so talking to somebody is going to help and don't just talk to anybody talk to somebody that you trust 
and talk to somebody that have sense a lot of people are just roaming the streets and they're mad somebody that is able to reason rationally going to help you with the situation and they're going to help you find a solution and even if they don't sometimes just talking to somebody makes you feel better and for me i realized that talking to people just makes me come to the realization within myself because i am so self-aware that this is the problem and this is what i'm going to do to fix the problem so that's that so i just want to end this video by saying that you are worthy you are enough and i sound like a cliche but i feel like i've been needing to hear that from myself because people around me have said it to me but just i have not been able to say it to myself so if you're not able to say it to yourself today let me be the one to say it to you you are worthy you're enough your looks does not deter me if you deserve love or not you deserve love because you do love on yourself take care of yourself and treat yourself how you would treat others thank you so much for tuning into this week's video and i love you so much take care of yourself i really mean that from the bottom of my heart take care of yourself and i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much bye bye